Hey everyone, Chomix here. I have a confession. I'm old. I've been following the Sonic the Hedgehog series for as long as I can remember. I grew up with it, and it grew up with me. There have been so many games to come out during the time I've been invested in this series, and I've been around to see it all. I've seen the series grow. I've seen it regress. I've seen it make three left turns instead of going right. There's never really a dull moment of being a fan of this overgrown blue rat. And one of the things that comes with being a Sonic fan, for better or for worse, is never knowing where the series will go. This is something that has kind of been all over the place for as long as Sonic has been Sonic. It's pretty much the single most terrifying thing about being a fan, because we've seen the series take some really, really questionable turns but we've also seen so many awesome and out-of-the-box results from this chaotic way of coming up with new game ideas. You just never know what you're gonna get. As many Sonic fans could probably agree to, the pure variety of Sonic games is a double-edged sword. Don't like the current state of the series? Don't worry, it'll probably change within the next few years to something completely different. Oh, you love the current state of the series? Well, it'll probably change within the next few years to something completely different. Yeah, tough luck, buddy. The thing is, you can't let yourself get too attached to this series, or you'll inevitably get your heart broken. Because this is exactly what happened to me. From my entire time with the series, there was a certain point where I just broke. A certain game that just made me walk out on everything Sonic for quite a while. Now, if you've been subbed to my channel for a while, you'll probably know how emotionally invested I am with this series. And if you aren't subbed, let me be the first to tell you. I'm really emotionally invested in the series. If you're unaware, I make weekly Sonic video essays, so if that sounds up your alley, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It helps me out way more than you can possibly imagine. Especially if you're a returning viewer and you aren't subscribed yet, consider doing so now. Better late than never, right? And you definitely won't regret it, I promise. But getting back on track, I've expressed a lot of opinions on specific Sonic games on this channel. And today, we'll be looking at my personal history with the series, the game that made me leave, and also what happened afterwards that made me finally return. So let's dive right in. You all ever wanted to hear the origin story of Chowmix? No? Well, too bad. My journey with Sonic, no, video games in general, started by complete chance. I must have been around 5 years old and I was rummaging through a closet, because why not? Little kids have a ton of free time to do literally anything, and this is what I did in mine on that particular day. It was then that I stumbled upon some kind of device that I thought was maybe a digital camera at first. I brought it down to my mom and asked, Yo, what the f is this? It just so happened to be a Sega Game Gear with the cartridge of Sonic 2 already inside. My mom told me it was my aunt's and she had left it here years ago for some reason. Well, she obviously didn't need it anymore, I guess that meant I could play it, right? So I turned it on. The flashing lights, the bright colors, the upbeat music. It was like injecting pure dopamine straight into my brain. This was the beginning of my addiction. Not too long after my discovery of the Game Gear, and completely out of the blue, my dad came home from work with a Sega Dreamcast bundled with Sonic Adventure. I think he had recognized Sonic from the game I had been playing, or it was completely by coincidence because Sonic happened to be extremely popular at the time anyways. But either way, I was ecstatic. This was my first real video game console, and it was capable of full, mind-blowing 3D graphics nonetheless. The amount of hours I've spent in both Sonic Adventure 1 and Sonic Adventure 2 is embarrassing. Learning the shortcuts, getting the A ranks, improving my times, raising Chow, it was all sublime. Even going back to these games today, I still get this same feeling. Not too long after, I would get a Nintendo GameCube. In my eyes, the GameCube has always been the go-to place for Sonic games. Here, I'd also be able to play the ports of Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, but I'd also get to play a plethora of other Sonic games from before my time. You had the Sonic Mega Collection with Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, Sonic Spinball for the Genesis, and Sonic 3D Blast. Oh yeah, and the greatest game of all time, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. 
1v1 me and Mean Bean Machine, I will destroy you, bro. There was also another Sonic Collection game called the Sonic Gems Collection, which had Sonic CD, Sonic the Fighters, Sonic R, Sonic 2 Game Gear, Sonic Triple Trouble, Sonic Spinball, but for the Game Gear this time, Sonic Drift 2, Tails Sky Patrol, and Tails Adventure. So just in these two collections, we had over 15 classic Sonic games at our immediate disposal. It was literally the ultimate gateway into everything Sonic. And these were all games that were just so different from the 3D games I was playing prior. The art style, the music, the gameplay, it was all different, but amazing in its own unique way. And I haven't even mentioned yet the games that would debut on the GameCube itself. There was Sonic Heroes, Sonic Riders, and even Shadow of the Hedgehog, which were all games I really enjoyed playing at the time, even if at least one in particular is a bit infamous among the fanbase for being... special. But regardless, I was absolutely hooked. Sonic was my lifeblood at this point. It was like I was on life support, and unplugging me from Sonic would just have me flatline. My obsession with Sonic would lead me into getting into drawing. I was always so captivated by the illustrations from the Sonic Adventure games on the box art and in instruction manuals. This art style is one that I would continue to try and emulate to this day, and yeah, there's a little bit of improvement. I would also go on to watch any form of Sonic I could find on TV. Sonic Sad AM, Sonic Underground, The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, and my favorite, Sonic X. This era of Sonic was just so great. We had games constantly releasing, usually multiple per year. Sonic X episodes out the wazoo, and pretty much anything else you could think of. It was all just happening, and life was good. And with the success of this era, we were then being promised a brand new next-gen era of Sonic. It was going to be bigger, better, and most importantly, faster than anything we'd ever seen before. And I was pumped. At the start of this new era, I upgraded to an Xbox 360, and with it, I was able to play Sonic 06, the true next-gen Sonic game with mind-blowing HD visuals. I'll admit, even back then, I knew this game was a dumpster fire, but I still loved it. Even though it was laughably bad at times and definitely didn't live up to the hype it created, it really did seem quote-unquote next-gen to me, probably because of the in-game graphics and CGI cutscenes. As for the gameplay, it's one of those it's so bad it's good type of deals, and I really enjoyed having friends over and just passing the controller around to try and see who could break the game in the funniest way possible. The legitimately good aspects of the game definitely didn't go unnoticed by me though. I still really enjoyed the game because of the characters, writing, music, and story. Sure, the pieces didn't all fall neatly in place, but you could definitely still tell it was trying its best. The next mainline game I would play on the Xbox 360 was Sonic Unleashed. I remember being so hyped up for this game. From the trailers and the box art, it just seemed like a ginormous, high-budget game that I couldn't wait to get my hands on. When I first popped it in, I just remember my jaw hitting the floor when seeing the graphics. They were a huge step up from Sonic 06. It was unlike anything we've ever seen before in a Sonic game. But getting into gameplay, I couldn't help but notice how much more restricted it felt compared to the other 3D games I had played. The levels were designed like corridors, and it just felt more on rails. It was a new type of gameplay that I remember not being good at at the time due to the large focus on reactionary obstacles, but I definitely saw the potential in it and had a really fun time nonetheless. But on the other side of the coin, there was the Werehog gameplay. Not only did it take up the majority of the game, but each level seemed to drag on for far longer than I was comfortable with. Especially with the Werehog being so slow, I would often find myself becoming impatient and hating how I would have to go back to hunt for medals in order to progress. At least in terms of story, it was everything I had come to expect from the series at that point, and it was probably my favorite part of the game. Sonic Unleashed was actually a game that I never got around to finishing until actually pretty recently. So overall, and especially since I didn't finish it, it left a bit of a bitter taste in my mouth. But even though I threw in the towel on this one, I never considered it a bad game. So these were two questionable games in a row, and admittedly, my confidence with the series was dwindling, as were many other fans. 
I specifically remember being a Sonic fan during this period was kind of difficult. The amount of people ridiculing the series was at an all-time high. And frankly, it was a bit embarrassing to admit how invested with the series I was given its recent reputation. But this didn't quite stop my passion for the Hedgehog. Although I wasn't as involved with the series as before, I would still try to keep up with it whenever possible. During this time, I wasn't into the spin-offs at all, because let's face it, this is more or less what we were dealing with at the time in that department. And Sonic the Hedgehog 4 just seemed like a weird step back that I wasn't super interested in. So at this point, I was banking on the next mainline game to be something big, exciting, and ambitious in order to breathe new life into the series. And oh boy, did I definitely miss the mark on that one by a few football fields. What Sonic Team ended up doing was basically the complete opposite. The next mainline game, Sonic Colors, was the second game to use the boost formula. And I was pretty excited because this was a game dedicated to this playstyle, unlike Unleashed, where the Werehog tended to overshadow the boost gameplay. It was finally time to see what the boost gameplay was capable of now that it was the sole focus. I do think the gameplay holds up pretty decently, but I still have a lot of gripes with it. Most levels are incredibly short and feel like they were separated from an original larger level into shorter segments. The game also relies way too much on 2D, with a heavy focus on blocky platforming. Like they took the word platforming way too literally. This game is filled to the brim with floating platforms. Sure, these exist in pretty much every Sonic game, but they're usually at least disguised within the level's aesthetic in clever ways. In pretty much every level of colors, the platforms are just floating metal squares, and there's a lot of them. All things considered, Sonic Colors is an alright game, yet it was the game that made me completely leave the series. It was at this point where I realized, maybe Sonic games weren't targeted towards people like me anymore. Maybe I had just outgrown the series. The story was insultingly simple, lagging any depth. The dialogue was terribly cheesy on top of the characters constantly cracking awful jokes, character designs resembling those of Teletubbies, levels with themes of cookies and marshmallows. What the heck was going on here? Where were my space colony arcs? Where were my rival characters with dark pasts? Where were my stories with endearing character progressions? Playing through this entire game, I just felt nothing. There were barely any hype moments, the boss battles were bland, the set pieces were non-existent, the cutscenes were nothing more than characters flailing their limbs around, throwing incredibly weak insults at each other. Instead of trying something grandiose and in your face, Sonic Team ended up doing something so inoffensive and tame that it just didn't feel anything like the Sonic I had come to know up until that point. While previous Sonic games were designed for people of all ages to enjoy, this game was made for very young children. I began to question everything. Was Sonic always like this? Am I only noticing this now because I'm older? In hindsight, this way of thinking was completely wrong, but it was already too late. I had decided Sonic just wasn't for me anymore. It was a sad realization, but it was one that made me finally quit. And so I just stopped, and I went on to go through life. I became invested in other things like guitar, TV shows, or other video games. The next mainline game to come out was Sonic Generations, but it was a game that kind of just released without me really even realizing it. I had just completely stopped following the series along with news and release date information. I did eventually play the game, and I did enjoy it as it was kind of just a big celebration of everything Sonic had been throughout the years, but that's all it really was for me. Nothing more, nothing less. So I returned to my usual hobbies. Eventually, I did learn about Sonic Lost World, which just reinforced my idea that Sonic just wasn't for me. It was somehow even more kid-friendly than Colors. The gameplay looked watered down, the graphics emulating something from Super Mario, and the story didn't seem like anything taking itself too seriously. The direction the series was going was just not where I wanted it to be going. I didn't even bother with this one because I already knew I wouldn't enjoy it. A few years later, a teaser trailer dropped for a new Sonic game, hinting at a story with a much darker tone. This was, of course, Sonic Forces. I remember seeing the teaser on my Twitter timeline. 
and when watching the trailer it seemed somewhat promising, but my trust in the series was so low that I completely disregarded it. Every once in a while I'd see some speculation videos from various Sonic tubers pop up in my YouTube feed talking about how this game would be the spiritual successor to the adventure games in terms of story. I also remember this game coming out very close to the release of Mario Odyssey, which was a game I was actually excited for. There was some forces versus Odyssey debates happening that I never took part in, but I always thought it was pretty funny. You see, I totally saw right through Sonic Forces. I knew it was going to be a total crap show just based off the recent state of the Sonic series. While others tried to hype themselves up, I had absolutely no confidence in it, and I knew it was going to turn out terribly. Lo and behold, it did. I ended up buying Odyssey, had an amazing time, and never really looked back. Eventually, I ended up experiencing Sonic Forces via a compilation of all the cutscenes on YouTube just out of curiosity. And surprise, I wasn't impressed. In fact, I had zero expectations for this game and somehow still ended up disappointed. I would go on to continue playing Mario Odyssey on my Nintendo Switch. Years went by and I had barely touched a Sonic game since the Sonic Forces incident. I would occasionally remember the good old days of playing Sonic games on my GameCube, and one day, I decided to revisit the adventure games. Right from the title menu, my eyes lit up, and a rush of amazing memories playing these games began to fill my head. I went through all of the story modes for each character, and slowly but surely remembered why I loved this series so much. It was the style, the character design, the level aesthetic, even the sound effects. It really got me thinking, what makes a Sonic game good? I would eventually play through more Sonic games from my childhood, taking notes on what made these games really tick. At the time, I was experimenting with Unity, a free engine for creating video games. I decided to try my hand at coding a game from the ground up, replicating the adventure style of gameplay. I tried to reverse engineer these games, and it made me realize how they worked and why they were so fun. Funny enough, although Sonic 06 is a broken mess, it's actually a really great way of seeing how programming these kinds of games could go wrong, and I used the glaring flaws to help me understand certain aspects of the game design. This fan game never got too far, but the project ignited something within me, a second wind for the Sonic series. It was then that I decided to start my YouTube channel. At the time, I occasionally streamed on Twitch, so I had some video production experience. Actually, my YouTube channel is a personal one I've been using since 2008. I would upload occasionally, but nothing past nonsensical jokes that me and my friends would make that only we would find funny. So I ended up cleaning it up and rebranding. Something I was extremely passionate about was the pure ambition of a lot of the previous Sonic games. It was something I strongly felt was lacking in a lot of the 2010 games. It was then that I remembered how I had seen so many videos ridiculing Sonic 06 over the years. Did it deserve it? Probably. But I still hardly ever saw anyone give it credit for what it did right, because I personally thought that it did do a lot of things right. Although it didn't turn out as a conventionally good game, it had that ambition, and it was a hill I was willing to die on. And so, the first real episode of my YouTube channel began production. It's a funny story, actually. Before I started my script for Sonic 06, I wanted to do a complete playthrough of the game to get the experience fresh in my mind. So, because I didn't have my Xbox 360 anymore, I booted up my PS3 copy. It was the first time I had turned on my PS3 in a while, actually, and when I booted it up, well, I got a curious yellow blinking light. After some research, my fears came true. I had the yellow light of death. So, how did I overcome this? Well, I boiled my PS3's motherboard above my stovetop in order to liquefy the solder and reset the motherboard back in place. It was a long and complicated process, but after a series of questionable steps, I was able to get my PS3 working again. My Sonic 06 stream was actually a complete marathon of the entire game. I played the game from start to finish, totaling a whopping 16 hours straight of gameplay. And when it was all over, I used that gameplay to create the first official Chomix YouTube video, where I explained what Sonic 06 got right compared to the more recent games. If you haven't seen my first video, feel free to check it out. Even though it's my first video and it's a little bit cringe due to my delivery on some lines, the less snappy editing, and some other minor issues, I still think it holds up. And it's pretty cool to look back and see how much I've improved at this whole YouTube thing. But this first video really summarizes my feelings about the current state of the Sonic series. I think there's a lot you can learn about me and my opinions regarding the entire series just from this first video. 
So what happened after the creation of that first Chomix video? Well, you can watch it all unfold for yourself by watching the rest of my videos. So yeah, this was the story of my beginnings, why I left, and why I eventually came back to the Sonic series. I fell in love with the games at a young age, lived through some amazing moments, and experienced lows that only reinforced certain opinions. And since coming back, I've replayed a lot of those newer games that I didn't initially like, only to find that there were aspects that even I could enjoy. It's been a long and bumpy ride, and who knows where it's gonna go in the future. This journey has resulted in a much larger appreciation for the series as a whole, and I love sharing my opinions about it here on this channel on a weekly basis. The Sonic series is very special for so many people, and figuring out what makes these games tick, along with why people love certain aspects of these games, is something I love discussing. So hopefully you all can understand me just a bit better, and have some insight on why some of my opinions are the way they are. Hey everyone, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. This was a more personal video, so I hope I was still able to make it interesting. If you did like what you saw, leave a like, and subscribe for more content similar to this. I upload on a weekly basis. In the comments below, let me know your personal history with the Sonic series. For example, what game did you start with? What are your opinions on the current state of the series? And to take this discussion even further, make sure to join the community discord. Link in the description. And finally, I'd like to give a mega huge shout out to my backers. You guys just absolutely rock and I'm so grateful that you guys allow me to keep doing this on a weekly basis. If you're also interested in becoming a member, make sure to press the join button or the membership link in the description for more details. You also get some cool perks, so make sure to check it out. And with all that being said, I hope everyone has a fantastic day. Peace.